Hi, it's Mary Beth Shaw from Stencil Girl Products. Welcome back. It's the second to last day of my June stencil broadcasting. And I've got a project for you that I think is a lot of fun today. I have enjoyed bringing these techniques to everybody. I hope I hope everybody's been liking them. I've been getting amazing feedback from people. So positive and so supportive. It's it's just been lovely. And um it's a lot of fun to do this. It really is. I have had um, a lot of fun thinking up the projects. And honestly, I have way more that I could do. <coughs> okay. Hey, Mary. <laughs> you just saw me sneeze. How embarrassing. It's the first time I've sneezed on the air. Hi, Donna. How are you? Um, so what we're going to do at Stencil Girl, we're going to have a regular feature where I do live streaming on a more regular basis. We haven't decided exactly how frequently, at least once a month, um, you know, and we'll go from there. So if you ever have any ideas, um, just send us a message about that. Um, you don't need to put them in all the comments right now because I've got a project to show you. But while we're main, waiting for some more people to come on, I got to tell you quickly about my day. Okay, so I woke up this morning. Hi, Nancy. How are you? I woke up this morning with a cat between me and John in bed as usual and John and I was still half asleep and John goes honey I think Lyra has a problem this is our little girl cat and I said what do you mean he said I think she might have some poop stuck on her butt and I'm like oh no and I couldn't believe I didn't smell it because I have a really good sniffer but see I've got this allergy stuff going on hence the sneezing so I didn't smell it. So anyway, I got up and I thought, well, I need to give her um, some treatment, you know, or like try to clip it off of her hair. She's a Maine Coon, so she's got a lot of hair. So I got her on the floor, and this is something that does not make her very happy. <laughs> Donna's laughing. It's like only animal lovers could appreciate this story, right? So... Uh, she was not very happy, but I managed to trim a lot of it off. I thought I had it all off, but I wasn't quite sure. So I went back a little bit later and took another look and there was more. And what was, hi Brenda, what was even worse is I had cut her, this teeny little cut, like the size of my little finger. And so there was a little place there and I'm like, oh no. So I called the vet and I had to take her in and, um, she's fine but lyra had a little brazilian today i think ha so anyway that's my joke for the day and it's true sue Knowles says her poodle gets like that and donna says her palm does that at times too i know it's just like the downside of animals and we love them so much but we're gonna set her up for a regular little i guess Brazilians, that's what I'm going to call it, because she's quite cosmopolitan, Lyra is, and um, every eight weeks I think I'll take her in, because otherwise what am I going to do, right? Okay, baby wipes, I know I had baby wipes, Mary, I had the baby wipes, the scissors, the whole thing, it was like more than a baby wipe situation, that's all I'm going to say. Okay, what are we going to do today, you're wondering, what is it, any ideas? Guesses? You know, it's the Eddie Rose stencil, one of my very favorite designs, one of my own designs, and I love this stencil so much. I just, I've designed it in like three sizes because I can't get enough of it. Does anybody have any guess what we're doing? No one's guessing or else it's too um, late in the feed. It's a wood burning tool, yes, and it's plugged in and it's hot. So I wanna tell you a little bit about wood burning before we start. Um, yes, Deborah Gable got it. Hey Deborah, how are you? How's Brittany? Sending you hugs from afar. Anyway, it is a wood burning tool indeed, and I get my wood burning tools from uh, Walnut Hollow. I actually have two of them here, a green one um, this one has a little thermostat on it. Oh, Brittany's good. Great. Excellent. And this one just has an on-off switch. So, 
you can get um, different kinds. I mean, I kind of like having two because then I don't have to change tips because if it gets really hot, it's really hard. <laughs> Brenda says, cool. No, it's not Brenda, it's hot. I'm just teasing you. <laughs> anyway, um, if you have to change tips, it's a lot of, um, you know, you have to let it cool down or try to cool it down. Sometimes I'll do that with a damp cloth, unplug it first. But right now I have a little, um, a tool or, um, what is this called? You know, a thing. I have them both plugged in here along with my phone. And then they come with these little things that they sit up. And Brenda's laughing. Thank God she doesn't think I'm too obnoxious. They come with these little things that you're supposed to sit in, in when it's down on the, um, you know, when you're not using it, between using it. But I am not a huge fan of these. I like instead getting a piece of ceramic and just, or glass or something that will not burn or like a brick or something like that and laying them on that between working with them. Because I think otherwise, um, I've had situations where these little metal things have like flipped up and so on and so forth. So they come with, um, they come in a little kit with all kinds of little attachments. Like you can get these attachments that'll burn like little round things in to your um, substrate. You can get these are some of my favorites. They burn like just big circular. You know how I love my circles. Deborah says she agrees with the stands that they're not great. So just get a piece of ceramic or something. Oh, Judy Osborne, you're watching while you're on a drive to Seattle? How cool is that? I'm providing car entertainment. How fun. I trust you're not driving, right? Right. <laughs> anyway, so there's a lot of different tips, and there's some tips on these where you can even cut stencils if you so desire. Like there's, um, this tip would be a good stencil cutting one, and there's also a little knife tip that comes with it. This is my favorite tip. You see that little shape? It's kind of shaped like a petal. I really like that shape because it's really nice for kind of like getting little shading. You can just get a little stroke. It's almost like a little flame hits the wood and it just creates this, I don't know, this really cool little result. I did wood burning in my book, my book on stencils, in case you guys didn't know, I've never really pitched that, but that's a wood burning piece on the cover of the book. And, um, you have this set, Nancy. Yeah, it's um, here. It's the piece inside the book, and it, it is just it couldn't be easier. And it's a warm day here in St. Louis. I have the window open. It does create a little bit of a smell, but I like the smell. It's almost like a fire or something. Like it's kind of a soothing, nice smell, and um, so I enjoyed the smell of it. I've got this one going, so what I'm going to do, Jessica's got one of these tools too. Carol Furlong, it's your first time. Well, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Um, I'm going to show you how I get started. First of all, I just get these inexpensive pieces of wood, and um, I don't even know what kind of wood it is. It's not balsa. It's a, oh my gosh, we have Pam Lewis Williams from South Wales, from Cardiff. Oh, I've always wanted to go there. In my future, I will visit. Oh, sounds amazing. Um, I like these just lightweight wood. A smooth wood is nice to work on. And um, you will notice as you get going on this that there's definitely a grain to the wood and um, you know, it just is what it is. And if you're working with stencils, there's no way to really work with the grain or anything like that. It just, you know, you will just get better at it. I'm a little out of practice, which I realized when I was starting today. So um, I'm gonna turn the camera down now, if I can, and um, so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Sorry about the what is going on with my little thingy ding? 
Okay, so here we're showing the wood. How many times have I done this right? And then today I can't manage to get the camera right. And I'm going to um, raise this so that I can see your comments if anybody is still talking. And um, Okay, this is the base of my tripod. Sorry about that. I don't know what I'm doing today. And here's my little... My little ceramic part and my little wood tools let's see if I can get a better shot here yeah there we go all right so the first thing I do is pick a stencil that I'm gonna use and grab a pencil which I've got a pencil and try to lay it out in a way that's appealing and what I often do is when I make these I um, I just start with the bare wood, the lightweight wood. I just like how it looks, and then I just go over it with, you could just use like a little bit of a fluid acrylic or, you know, really any kind of, um, you could use pan pastel, anything you want. Um, I think I'm gonna start here, and so now I just trace around it. And I'm not going to trace around this whole thing, I don't think, unless you guys want to talk amongst yourselves, which you really can't do. That's the only downside about this live. I wish I could actually hear your voices, you know? Um, this is more of a mask than a stencil in that there's not actual breaks in it like Eddie Rose, which I is the other example I have going here. Eddie Rose, what I did was I just filled in the places where there were, like see here how you would have the breaks, the normal breaks in the stencil. As I was using the tool, I just filled that in and made it into one continuous line because it would be more appealing that way. Now this one, because it's a mask like this, I have choices. So. I can do the foreground or the background in the wood or in with the burning and that gives me options. The other way I like using these, I said I liked them um, with the fluid acrylics. I also like using them as the first layer for encaustic work. It is really beautiful to have a wood burning um, first layer in encaustic. It is so pretty and sometimes all you want to do is just you know put a layer of beeswax on top of it and you don't even want anything else because it's that pretty. Some of these parts are so small I'm gonna just leave them and this is the improvisational part of using stencils and that is, I hope if you guys have learned anything at all through spending this month with me is that I think of stencils as a tool that you use in your work and then you make them your own. You can riff off of them. They're just a template, a pattern, a tool, a starting place. They are not necessarily the end all product. I use them in so many different ways. And I really hope that's what I've been able to teach during this month because that is how I think of the stencils is something to just aid you in creating art. And you can use the same stencil over and over. Oh, this looks quite interesting, but I had a little that is a solid area right there. See, I was questioning this one part right here that's really large, but it is a solid area, so. All right, we're gonna put it down, and I'm gonna show you. You know what, let's just work on the back of one of these first, and I'll show you some of the marks that you can make. Okay, so if you just put it straight down, you let the tool do the work. You don't press, okay? By just letting the tool do the work, I can get the shape of the tool on there. You can actually make these little, I've got the grain going against me in this. 
You know what? I need to turn it back up. I had turned it down for a minute. Oh, Debbie, so sweet. She said she's learned so much that I am appreciated. That is awfully sweet. It's really nice when you can... i got to wait for this to heat back up. So I'm going to show you this other tool that I like while we're waiting for the other one to heat back up. See that tip? It's not that exciting, maybe, but I love this particular tip. You can just make a line with it, first of all. Like, let's say you wanted to, you know, write words or whatever. You could do that. You can just scribble. You could probably outline within the stencil, but I would get a little worried about it because you don't want to get too close to the mylar. The mylar is naturally heat resistant, but this is pretty darn hot. Yeah, it was starting to get a little bit at the edge, so I would not do that. But, um, hey, Lynn, I'm so glad you're here. And Diana from Colorado, yay! But this tip, in addition to making lines, you can just put it straight down and it makes these circles. And this is so satisfying to me. I'm gonna see if I can hold it up. Hey, Christy Taylor, you must be home from work. I'm gonna see if I can hold this up and give you a better view of this. I wish you could hear the sizzle. <gasps> Joanne Swanson from Alaska. Oh my gosh, wow, wow, wow. All these places on my bucket list of places I want to go. See how you can easily make these dots or you can make the line. Now let's see if our other guy has gotten, um, if he's gotten warm enough yet. Yeah, he's warm now. He's really hot now. Can you see the um, smoke? Yeah. Okay, so that's just the back. So if we're starting at the front end, what I typically do is create my outline with kind of the edge of this. And I'm not going to be able to hold it up because it's just going to be too hard. I think I'm going to, um, and I move the wood, not the tool. I keep the tool pretty much in the same position. And this is one of these things where you would learn what works best for you. As I said before, it's not an issue of pressing hard. The tool does the work. Gerilyn Manning just came on and says, burning polka dots, yeah, I know, right? I love that. I could just find sit there and burn polka dots for a while. I find that very, very oddly satisfying. And that's what some of those bigger, um, bigger points will do, or the bigger round ones. <gasps> Kaglar from Istanbul, Turkey. Oh my goodness, welcome. I am so sorry about what's going on over there. I hope you are safe and out of harm's way, and I'm glad you're here with us. So you can see how easy it is if you use the side like this to just create your little outlines, and then you can go back in and fill in as much as you like. So see how the outlines are coming in? And I just like going one direction with it. I don't know why. I have never really become an expert at this. I suppose if I did become an expert, you know, I would maybe learn some different tips. I just know enough to be dangerous. What can I say, right? Okay, so let's see if we can get a little shading action in this part right here. As you bring it across, you can just kind of pull it away as you bring it across. And you can get a lighter effect or you can just let it sit and get that black charred effect. See how I'm filling that in totally black. It is just charred. 
and it smells so good. Oh, Missy says her great uncle used to make wooden jewelry boxes with their names and pictures burnt into the lid. Oh, I hope you still have one. That sounds amazing. What a lovely thing. That's so lovely. So then you can also, what I like to do is just bring it across and then have the outline, but leave part of it unburned so you get the value changes. I don't even know if I'm doing the foreground or the background at the moment. I've just gotten distracted here. <laughs> What a surprise, right? Debbie's got to go. It's her 32nd anniversary. Oh my goodness. Toodles. I'll see if I can show the shading up close. Let's go back to the bag. Judy wants to see it up close again. Okay, so here's if you just sit it down on the wood and you get the char, okay? Or you can kind of come from the side and you just gently go over see the different variations of brown that you can get you could also go up like this and get a really fine line I really like making the line with the side I don't know why there's something about that little curvy part that to me makes the best little line Judy's got it, okay. And you kind of get the hang of maneuvering that line around. Does that make sense? And then you can kind of pull it away from the line a little bit. So I hope that's a better show of that. I want to show you this one I've been working on so you'll see some of the shading a little bit more. How I outlined it and then I let some of those middle areas stay light and then I took some of them very dark. You know, I didn't do this like there was a light source or anything like that, but I just did it in certain ways so that I could get an interesting effect. And yeah, Deborah, I like this tip a lot. When I was first looking into doing wood burning, I actually had done some research um, online, of course. What do we all do, right? And um, this was the favorite tip of like the master wood burning people. And <laughs> Nancy says, gotta go get my wood burning set. Judy loves the spirals. Yeah, it's. Um, and I just love being on the edge of that because you can get these lines so crisp. Now the other thing I want to show you before you um, take off here to go have dinner or whatever you're doing, let's show you on the back. I'll bring this across. This one I should have sanded a little bit. It's rough on the back side. Um, all right, so let's say you make a mistake. You can actually go in with a craft knife and you can scrape away and just scrape down to bare wood again. So you can correct a lot of mistakes. You could do a little sanding tool, you could do a craft knife, anything like that. And then when you brush it away, you can fix mistakes if you need to. And trust me, I always have mistakes. Um, see, look at that. That's also another way you could create interest within a dark area. Like, let's take this little guy right here, this super dark area. You could take this, And now, mind you, I'm doing this in mid-air, mid right? And you could create, well, I got some char that I wiped away, but you could create a little bit of light and dark in, um, within a previously burned area. 
Brenda says, I make a lot of messes before I get done with pieces. Yes, me too. And I often learn so much from my mistakes. Oh, Judy Osborne Dremel sanding. That's genius. Because you could put that little tip on it and then really get right in there exactly where you needed to go. Definitely. And I bet you could get a lot of really cool effects with that too as far as shading goes. So... This is really about it today. Um, just look at your, your stencils as a template. You know, think about using them for these unusual applications because you know what? All you need to do is trace. You just trace your design and then you can just do darn near anything with it, right? So, I think it's a lot of fun. I know I, I had bought a wood burning tool way back in the day. I don't even know why. And then never really got charged up to use it. And then when I figured out I could use it this way, I was just totally smitten with it. And I think you will be too. Because it's a very, very nice project to make. So, anybody have any more questions for me before we head out? I'll be back here tomorrow again at the same time. Make sure you sign up for our Stencil Girl newsletter, The Scoop. It's full of fantastic information. Consider joining our Stencil Club. We have an awful lot of fun all the time. People, um, you know, with our Stencil Club membership, it includes a video every month with the stencils. So it's quite a nice deal, really. And um, that's about all I know today. So I am so happy you joined me once again. Thanks. I dropped you all. Thank you so much. And I will see you all soon. Um, oh, question. Deborah has a question. You have a few wood burning tools with different tips instead of let's see if I can get the rest of this instead of switching out tips all the time I do I have two tools instead of switching tips just because I don't I well I just happen to have two tools so I thought well why not just have them both going with different tips so that works well for me but you know what not all wood burners are, re are created equal um, a lot of them I don't think get as hot as I need for them to be. So I've I've been happy with the ones from Walnut Hollow though. You can get a lot more expensive ones with um, thermostats and stuff, but um, I don't think I'm ready for that kind of wood burning yet. So adios friends, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.